throughout these notes, um, through the whole course so far, we've usually tried to show where the formulas we use come from, either geometrically or algebraically or using calculus. Um, this section is so huge and so large um, and contains so much material that we will actually just be taking the formulas as given and just simply concentrate on how and why we use them. If you're interested in um, finding the derivation of the formulas, where they come from, you can find them in section uh, 14.5, not 11.9, that used to be 11.9, sorry. It is now 14.5 of your textbook. All right, so let's begin with unit, tangent, and normal vectors. Now, we've actually already worked with the unit tangent vector before. That is the same vector that is tangent, but is divided by its length in order to make the unit tangent vector. So if I consider a point here, right here, the tangent vector would be going this direction, assuming, by the way, that we're moving from left to right along the graph like we normally do, and then that is our function. Okay, so this is our tangent vector, and tangent vectors are so important. We give them their own symbol. Isn't that nice? So it's called the capital T tangent vector. There you go. Now, we've already seen the tangent vector, so let's just remind ourselves how it is. You take the derivative vector or of the derivative of the position, right? So our prime, the derivative, and you divide it by its magnitude in order to make it a unit tangent vector. All right, now what about the normal vector? Oh, and for the record, if you're moving along this point here, then your tangent vector is actually this direction if you're over here, okay? Now the normal vector, um, we define the unit normal vector as a unit vector that's orthogonal to the tangent, the unit tangent, and it's pointing inward. So if you see the curve, there's a curvature here to this, um, almost like that's the name of the section we're in. Eh? So it's a curvature, and we're going to point inward to the curve. So right there, and you're going to have a normal vector. It has an N like that. And together, they would form a right angle because they are perpendicular to each other. Similarly, if you're over on this side, over here for this one, then the inward part of the curve is here. So you would point in like that. And that's the normal vector there. You can imagine that for things like motion, um, which way the normal vector is pointing is important. So um, we are assuming it's pointing towards the inside of the curve. Now, capital N with a little arrow over it, that's the symbol for the normal um, unit normal vector. So it would be, okay, well, how do you find it? It's the tangent vector's derivative. So you take the tangent vector's derivative and you divide it by the magnitude of the tangent vector. And that's the unit normal vector. All right, so let's use them in a problem. Maybe that'll help make it all make more sense. That's going away. All right, so we have a position function, r of t, which is t, t squared, which we have a graph of right down here. Um, so t, t squared is a parabola, and its motion is, of course, going um, through the curve from left to right, because t is your x value, it's increasing. Okay, so we're moving this direction. Lovely. We're going to find the general formulas for the unit tangent and unit normal vectors. Well, before I go any further, I noticed in those formulas that I'm going to need the derivative, r prime. So I'm just going to figure that out really quickly. So r prime of t would be the derivative of r of t, which would be 1 comma 2t. That'll be helpful because for the tangent vector t, that is equal to r prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. So that would be 1 comma 2t divided by the magnitude of that. So the square root of 1 squared plus 2t squared, which would be 2t, oops oh, me, 1 comma 2t. 1 comma 2t divided by the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. That is the unit tangent vector right there. 
Now, if you want to write it out more longhand, it would be the same thing as 1 over the square root of 1 plus 4t squared, and then 2t over the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. I mean, they both say the same thing. The one on the right is you know, the more correct way to write it, but we get the general idea. OK, now let's think about this. This is my tangent vector. I need to find the derivative of that tangent vector in order to be able to do any of this. So to do that, I'm actually going to first rewrite this. Um, I'll just put it up here because I don't have anywhere else to go. So let's rewrite this real quickly. This is 1 plus 4t squared to the negative a half. And then it's 2t times 1 plus 4t squared to the negative a half. Why am I doing that? Well, I recognize that I'm going to have to take the derivative. And we all know that taking derivatives with square roots is a no-go. So we're going to have to make them into powers and then go from there. So this is another way you could write that same um, unit tangent vector. All right, to find the normal vector, I'm going to need the derivative of this. So I need to find that. So let's find. All right, so we found the unit tangent vector, no problem. Now I need to find t prime. OK, so I need the derivative of this part up here. So that would be bring the negative a half down. So negative a half, 1 plus 4t squared, the negative 3 halves, times the derivative of the inner part, which is 8t, because of chain rule. Right? So I'm using chain rule right there. All right. Well, the left side is easier. The x part is easier. The y part is going to involve product rule. So you have to take 2t times this. So take the derivative of 2t, that's 2. Leave the 1 plus 4t squared to the negative a half like that. Plus, now leave it 2t. Then you multiply by negative a half, 1 plus 4t squared to the negative 3 halves. And then multiply by 8t. So this is using both product and chain. OK, that's exciting. Um, now, obviously, we can simplify this. I mean, well, I'm going to do the one on the left. That'll be pretty easy, actually. So if I took um, 2 goes into 4, or excuse me, 2 goes into 8 4 times. So it's negative 4t over um, the square root of 1 plus, well, let me do it as a square root. Let me just write it as 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves. That'll be easier. So 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves. OK, that one's easy. But the one on the right, I mean, we could do it, but it would take you know the whole page to get there. Um, so you would have to uh, basically make them have a common denominator. So you have to put this one over the square root, this one over the three, um, well, the square root to the third power. You'd have to simplify your numbers. This is what maple is good for. So let me see. I think I did this in maple. Let me pull maple up. OK, so there it is. I said, hey, simplify that for me. <laughs> right? So this is your answer. So I, I said, take the derivative, differentiate, D-I-F-F, -F, differentiate, take the derivative. So take the derivative of, of one, or the square root of 1 plus 4t squared to the, with the t power. And there's the x portion. Then I asked it to do the y portion. And it did. But then I wanted that simplified. Like I could tell that wasn't simplified. So I said, hey, simplify that for me. And it did. Isn't that beautiful? So it's 2 over 4t squared plus 1 to 3 halves. Yes, I'm capable of doing that by hand, but it would take a lot of paper. And I don't have that much paper. So I'm going to write this. It's 2 over 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves. I'm just going to say maple simplify. And that's fine. You can use maple to simplify. OK, well, that's not my answer. <laughs> that's just t prime. The normal vector, which is what I'm actually looking for, is equal to t prime divided by the magnitude of t prime, which would be that negative 4t over 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves 
and then 2 over 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves, that. And then you would divide it by its magnitude. So you take the square root of each of these things squared. So to be negative 4t over 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves, all squared, plus, and then 2 over 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves, all squared. Well, again, yes, we could do this by hand. I mean, we're capable, but Geez, who would want to? <laughs> so let's use maple. Um, I think I have it right here. Yes. So, all right. So I'm telling it to simplify um, the derivative of all of those. Actually, I'm making it do it all in one step. It's literally the same steps I did above, but I'm doing it um, twice. So there's my um, t right there. So t was 1 over the square root of 1 plus 4t squared, 2t over that. So I'm saying, hey, take the derivative of that with respect to t. That's what the DIFF stands for. Take the derivative with respect to t, but then simplify it all. So I don't even have to do that as a separate step. And I named it tp1, just for whatever reason. So it's it gave it to me. There's the x, there's the y. So that's the same answer we have uh, um, on our paper. And then I said, find me the magnitude of that. So it did. Now don't worry about the cosine function. The cos that's co um, s i g n, not cosine like trigonometry. All it means is that this is plus or minus one. So it means that it's either positive or negative. That's it. it so don't freak out. It, it doesn't really mean anything. So I mean it means something, but um, you would either pick the positive or the negative one. So you have it right here. So right there, this is our normal vector, and I named it n one for normal vector for example one, so n1. So it's 2t negative, there's a negative right there. So negative 2t over the square root of 4t um, squared plus 1. Again, this cosine bit literally means either use positive or negative 1 for the square root depending on what you need to do. That's all it means. So since we um, want the positive one, we'll just use positive. So um, the trick is that the, calc the computer doesn't know if you want the negative square root for some reason, because of course, when you take the square root of both sides, it could be positive or negative. So the maple's just not um, making that decision for you. That's all. So if I go back here, oh, and then this is of course the I component on the left, and then this is the J component on the right for our vector. So this would be equal to negative two T over square root 4t squared plus 1, and then 1 over the square root of 4t squared plus 1. And we'll just make a little note. Um, cosine of something is literally just positive or negative 1. So um, I have to put it somewhere. I'm going to put it down here. So note, um, cosine, it's CSGN. It's not the trigonometry cosine. It's something else. Is either plus or minus 1 depending on um, which way you're wanting your normal vector. So we're going to choose the positive one because we're facing inward. So we choose positive one because our n vector is um, in facing inward. and up. Right. So there you go. That's just a little on, on its own still or note. So okay, so we're done with that. We found the normal vector. So now they want us to find the unit tangent and normal vectors at t equals zero and t equals one and draw them. Well, now that we did all that work, um, which honestly I should leave more space for, but now that we did all this huge work, then B and C should actually be crazy easy. So let's start with T equals zero. So at T equals zero, you want T of zero. Which would be equal to one over the square root of one and then zero over the square root of one, right? Because if you put zero into these equations right here, this part goes away, this part goes away. So it's literally one, zero. 
that's the tangent vector. And then the normal vector at 1, or at 0, sorry, the normal vector at 0 would be equal to, let's see here, um, 1 over the square root, oh no, sorry, 0. Sorry, I'm using this, this guy right here. So if you put 0 in there, it's 0. So 0 over the square root of 1 and then 1 over the square root of 1. So that would be 0, 1. Now if you look at the point where t equals 0, which is right here, so there's t equals 0. It just makes sense. Your tangent vector is 1, 0. Right? That's the tangent vector at 0. The normal vector at 0 is 0, 1. Notice they form a right angle, like that. All right, now what about t equals 1? OK, I'm going to do this in a different color. That way they show up nicer on the graph here. So the tangent vector at 1 would be 1 over the square root of 1 plus 4, and it'd be 2 over the square root of 1 plus 4. So I'm just taking 1 and substituting back into my tangent vector formula that I found in A. And that would be 1 over the square root of 5, 2 over the square root of 5, which, if you're interested, is about 0.45 and about 0.9. So over here at 1, here's t equals 1 right here. You have your tangent vector coming out like that. about 0.45 and 0.9. Now, notice the scales are not exactly the same, so that's why they won't necessarily look like that on this graph, but that, nevertheless, there you have it. Now, the normal vector would be equal to negative 2 over the square root of 4 plus 1, and then 1 over the square root of 4 plus 1, which would be negative 2 over the square root of 5 and 1 over the square root of 5, which makes a certain kind of sense, of course, because if you see them, they're the same numbers, but their positions are reversed from the tangent to the normal, and they have an opposite sign. Very much related to why slopes are negative reciprocals of each other um, back when you were in algebra class. It's, it's the same thing because, of course, these are um, the direction vectors of your tangent and your normal vector. So then your normal vector is going negative for the x, but positive for the y. So it's coming out like this. There's your normal vector at 1. And they form a right angle. So it moves left, but it moves up. Right? Left because it's negative. 